Hey guys, welcome back. We know next to nothing about Halo Infinite, which I find fairly worrying considering the game is potentially less than a year out from launch. But there's one facet of the game that worries me more than anything, more than the gameplay, more than the story, more than its longevity, more than anything. And recent events have only exacerbated my fears. The microtransactions. They're the bane of almost every single modern game. As much as we push back against them, the silent majority just keep on buying them. The publishers and executives who have never played a single video game in their entire life keep making hundreds of millions of dollars off them. And the integrity of major franchises is continually being chipped away at, with key features and elements previously either core to the game or unlockable through gameplay being locked behind paywalls. Halo 5 was a glaring example of this, as are Gears 4 and Gears 5, and I worry that Halo Infinite is just going to be the next game in this long, long list of games being chipped away at by greedy executives, and today I want to explain why, and also what I would do to try and resolve it. But first, seeing as this video is kind of coming out of nowhere, I want to provide some context as to why I'm actually making it. So, Gears of War is Microsoft's second flagship title for Xbox, and the two major releases since both A, it started being developed in-house at Microsoft by the Coalition, and B, the era of live service games began, have both had egregious monetization systems. Gears 4 was very much like Halo 5, everything was locked behind loot crates that, of course, were a massive grind to earn in-game, taking upwards of like 35 matches to unlock just one, or of course you could just pay to skip the gameplay and outright purchase them. Then Gears 5 came along with the promise of no loot crates and free DLC that was going to be funded by an item store, along with a sort of battle pass type system that replaced progression. The rewards for the Battle Pass, the Tour of Duty, were not only limited in that if you didn't unlock them after a certain time, they were just gone forever, unable to be unlocked until maybe they come back someday, but the rewards were also just flat out abysmal, like boring weapon skins, boring character skins ripped straight from the campaign, and so on. So the progression system that used to reward you with new characters and character skins and the like was replaced with something infinitely worse. But that's not all. It was clear at launch that certain things that were kind of staple to Gears were missing. Key characters that you've been able to play as since Gears 1's launch were just gone. Half the executions, including the iconic curb stomp, were seemingly absent despite the AI being able to do them. Well, I say absent, they weren't actually absent. They were instead just being held back to sell back to you at a later date. The Coalition decided to put the curb stomp, the curb stomp, in the item store, which is limited by the way. The store refreshes every day and also every week, and after that, the items are no longer unlockable, so there's sort of like a virtual timer ticking which is encouraging you to just buy them now. And what's more, they decided to charge you $5 for it. $5 for one of the most iconic elements of Gears of War that since 2006 has been in every game on day one just by default, but now, because of live service, it was drip fed to us months after release for $5. Granted, they did go back on this after the extreme backlash, but in my opinion, that's irrelevant. By doing this, they revealed their intent and they revealed how far they're willing to go with monetization, and it didn't look good. And I mean, the same thing also happened with Halo 5 as well. The Gravity Hammer wasn't in the game at launch. Instead, it was drip-fed to us via microtransaction-funded free DLC. DLC that isn't actually free, by the way. It's not free by any means as was Infection, as was Griffball, Oddball, Assault, etc, etc. The moral of the story is, this is just par for the course for live service games. This is how they work. They take content that is previously attainable through gameplay and just slap a price tag on it. And Gears 5 is just Microsoft's latest iteration of their live service system. But what does this mean for Halo Infinite? 
Well, we know almost for a fact now that it's going to be a live service game. There have been multiple job postings on Microsoft's career site asking for people who are familiar with both live service games and also microtransaction systems to come and work on Infinite. And also, on top of that, almost every single first party Xbox game is live service now. Halo, Gears of War, Sea of Thieves, Forza. I mean, Microsoft just absolutely love to push this live service trash and I can absolutely guarantee you that it's not going to stop anytime soon. Halo Infinite is almost guaranteed to be another live service game. But that isn't all. Remember last year when we were told that Infinite would not feature any real money loot boxes and we all rejoiced thinking that we'd won? Yeah, well... It turns out that Gears 5 is a game that also does not have any real money loot boxes, and look how that turned out. My worry is that Infinite is going to tread down the same path as Gears 5 to make up for all the money that they're going to lose by not doing real money loot boxes, aka rec packs. I mean, they've got to do something to make up the lost revenue, and it sure as hell will not be map packs or a season pass. But losing rec packs isn't the only concerning thing in terms of revenue there's the Game Pass too. Now, there's an increasing worry going around that games that launch on Game Pass, an option that allows people to spend infinitely less money to get a game, is leading to Microsoft having to make up the revenue that they lose from game sales elsewhere. And given that all their flagship titles that launch on Game Pass are now all live service games, where do you think that elsewhere is gonna be? Microtransactions. I fear that Gears of War 5 was a terrible form of foreshadowing for this. When you take the fact that Microsoft are going to make significantly less money from game sales thanks to Game Pass, and that they're not going to be making the millions from RNG loot crates anymore, and then you couple that with Halo Infinite's rumoured, and I will once again emphasise rumoured, $500 million budget, you realise that they've got a lot of revenue that they need to generate, and not many ways to generate it. So no matter what they do in terms of monetization, it's going to have to be intrusive in some way. And the Gears 5 way of doing it is just that. It's intrusive, it's predatory, but I bet you right now that despite the backlash, it still makes a hell of a lot of cash. And with Halo, I imagine that it'd make even more. I mean, I highly doubt that nowadays they could get away with any form of gameplay altering microtransaction, which is even more of a reason for them to implement a cosmetic only item store akin to Gears 5 in Halo Infinite. I mean, there are so many iconic cosmetics in Halo that people have adored for years that Microsoft know full well people would be willing to spend real life money on. I mean, they already did that with Halo 5. Remember the classic helmet rec pack that people spent ages begging for? Yeah, well, every now and then you can buy that for rec points, but most of the time, it's locked behind real money. And I mean, Halo 5, the entire game, took Halo's industry-renowned customization and unlock system and just monetized the entire thing. And despite the backlash, as you can see, it still made shed loads of money. It wouldn't surprise me in the slightest if Infinite featured some sort of revamped unlock system, where the most popular and highly demanded armors just so happen to be the ones that are left out of the progression system and locked behind a limited time store. Again, this is something that almost every single AAA game has nowadays, and it's something that's already been done in Halo with the classic helmet rec pack. Cosmetic only microtransactions do not belong in a game like Halo, where arguably since its conception, player customization, expression, and unlocking armors and other cosmetics have been a fundamental feature. If 343 monetize Halo's armor unlocking system for the second time, just this time with a slightly different spin on it, then People, <laughs> they won't be happy to say the least, but I mean, what else can they monetize? I mean, as far as I can tell, it's the only option that we have outside of Warzone, but microtransactions that apply to just one game mode, I'm pretty sure won't make anywhere near as much cash as the ones that apply to the entire game. If it did, then Warzone would have been the only monetized aspect of Halo 5, and clearly it wasn't. Now, this might be a little bit late, but I do just want to issue a brief disclaimer that I don't know the first thing about how video games are budgeted and what the profit margins on certain aspects of them are like, 
but from where I'm sat, which granted does give me a very simplistic view of things, a system akin to Gears 5 is looking pretty damn likely. I mean, it's what literally every single AAA game has nowadays, so if it were to be an infinite, I wouldn't even be slightly shocked. <sighs> right, rant over. I mean, I have no idea if the point that I just tried to make came across as eloquently as Shakespeare or just like the muddled, messy ranting of somebody who's just tired of all of his favorite games being screwed by greedy executives who don't even play them. Okay, so basically, if the point that I just tried to make didn't come across at all, then here's the too long don't watch. Gears 5 system, bad. Live service, bad. Game pass, worrying. No real money loot boxes does not mean that we're in the clear. Infinite needs to make a lot of money. It all adds up to the game needing some sort of intrusive microtransaction system, in my opinion. And I'm worried that it's going to manifest similarly to Gears 5. Capiche? Capiche. But at the start of the video, I promised that I'd propose a way to resolve this issue, and I will hold my oath fulfilled. Now, don't get me wrong, in an ideal world, Halo wouldn't have a single form of microtransaction within 10,000 miles of it, but fortunately, the industry is in the god awful state that it is, so it's not exactly too realistic. If it were me, from a complete armchair developer standpoint, I'd make it so every single base armor set, so the helmet, the body, the shoulders, and any other pieces, were unlocked through and only through gameplay. Then, the monetized bit would be the armor skins. Now, if you can remember, Halo 5 had those really lame armor skins that basically were just the white paint on the armor in different places. But I'd spice it up a little bit. I'd have different colors, maybe some patterns or skins be animated, or maybe you could even change the colors yourself and maybe add different patterns or textures like Doom 2016. That way, all the armor is unlocked entirely ethically through gameplay and gameplay alone and the armor skins that people didn't really care about in Halo 5 that simply just reskin how your armor looks, get an entirely new fresh coat of paint, and also can be used to generate revenue. And whilst we're at it as well, maybe throw some weapon skins into the monetization as well. I mean, I think Halo 4 did weapon skins the best, where you could just straight up buy what you wanted or not buy what you didn't want. I think that's probably the best way to go about it, but I would like at least some of them to be earnable through gameplay. And also, map packs. I have absolutely no issue whatsoever with map packs making a return. And that's it. That's how I'd resolve it. From a financing perspective, that is probably underwhelming as hell and would only make a fraction of the money that Halo 5 system and likely Halo Infinite system will make. But I think that's about as consumer friendly as you can get while still having microtransactions. And I think that's about all for today, fellas. I'm really sorry if this video has come off a bit rambly or ranty or not very structured. I, I spent an entire day working on this script and I could not decide if I should go ahead with it or not. And I gave it to other people to read it and see what they thought and they thought it was okay. So I went ahead with it. Um, again, if it came off as ranty and not particularly structured, then I honestly apologize. This isn't the type of content that I normally make. But, you know, when you've seen something that annoys you and you just want to have a good rant about it it's hard to hold that back and this is a video that i've been sat on for a while and i felt that this time was like perfect to make it so again apologies if it was not very structured but i felt like i just had to get this video out there anyways i want to hear your thoughts so given how little we know about infinite are you worried about the game's microtransactions how do you think they're gonna implement them because they are going to implement them at this point, I really, really wish that I could be of the belief that maybe, just maybe, Infinite will be a microtransaction-free game, but nah. All the job listings and also the fact that it's a AAA video game in the current year all but confirm that they will be in the game in some capacity. Now, just how bad they'll be, we won't know for sure until the game releases, but as I hope I've managed to convey at least semi-coherently in this video, I'm worried. Just please, 343, don't give us another condescending instructional video about the microtransactions. That one for Halo 5 was absolutely awful. Uh, wait, won't wreck packs with special weapons break the exquisitely refined balance of arena multiplayer? Secure your noise hole, soldier. Grown-ups are talking. Damn it. Despite the fact that you had Nick Offerman, it was still awful and patronizing and condescending, and just please don't do that again. Anyways. 
Big thank you to all of my amazing patrons for their continued support over there as per usual. And thank you all so much for watching. I really do appreciate you guys so much. And I'll catch you all in the next one.